Well, all of my, all the works that I produce, you know, sort of running right across all those different medias, actually comes from a, a strong storytelling background. Growing up um, in the Torres Straits, listening to extended, you know, sort of family members yarn about, you know, sort of different um, myths and legends, even just, you know, sort of daily activity, you know, what they went through as, as children themselves, you know, sort of growing up in the um, early period in, in the Torres Straits. So it, it really comes from that fusion, I suppose, of Torres Strait, you know, sort of mythology mixed with personal history, mixed with uh, family history, and then, you know, sort of layered, I suppose, with um, a lot of, um, of humour. Up in the heavens, the gods contemplate the next move. It actually started off as, a, as quite a small um, lino cut print, and that, that first little print was actually called Midas Touch, which was the, the joining of the, the two fingers, I suppose, looked at the creation of Adam from the Sistine Chapel frescoes. And I, I suppose over, you know, sort of over the years since you know, sort of producing that work, I've always wanted to expand on that creation story within you know, the, those couple of panels. And that's literally what I did for, for that particular work there. So it grew from that little print to, to, to the work that is now you know, up on the ceiling in, in that gallery space. And that work, you know, sort of, if, you, if you look at dimensions, it's probably you know, almost uh, four metres in length and depth and you know, probably about 40 centimetres thick or something like that. It's actually composed of six different um, panels. There, there are four panels of lino, black and white lino cut print. And then there's two panels which are a sculptured frieze as well. But all the panels, you know, sort of butt together to, to form that overall, overall work. When I looked at, I suppose, reproducing, you know, that, that particular work, I didn't, um, I didn't want the, the figures to be draped in, you know, the, the typical, you know, sort of biblical, you know, sort of flowing gowns and, you know, sort of things like that. So what I did, initially was to strip all the main figures of all their, um, all their clothing, basically, and adorn them with traditional Torres Strait dance paraphernalia and ceremonial um, headdresses and things like that. So there's, there's a figure there that has, you know, uh, a turtle shell mask. Very, very plain, but it shows, I suppose, the, the path of Torres Strait people, you know, sort of connecting with, um, you know, the, the sea product, uh, produce around them and making, you know, sort of ceremonial objects and masks and things out of that. There are then other figures that have the, the elongated wooden mask as well, which shows, I suppose, the, the, the connection between Torres Strait and also Papua New Guinea, because a lot of the, the wooden artefacts based in, you know, sort of Torres Strait were actually traded from, uh, from coastal um, Papua New Guinea and then, you know, sort of further adorned while the, when they came back to the Torres Straits. But then when you look even further into, into you know, that, that work, particularly in the, in the four panels of Lino Cut, there are also references to, uh, to Star Wars. So one of the figures is actually leaning on the, on the Death Star and then you've got also uh, an X-Wing fighter, you know, sort of flying through the sky. And then, you know, speaking of other elements that, you know, sort of fly across that, you know, particular plane, You've got references to, to Hades Comet. You've got paper planes. You've got Da Vinci flying machines. So this is, I suppose, the, the world that I create in, basically. So I'm often drawing um, elements from different cultural um, areas right across the world and, and infusing them into, into my arts practice.